All right, hello everybody. How are we today? Good. My name is Sarah Colley. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator here at the Great Falls Public Library. We are here to connect people and knowledge to empower folks to find the information that they want as they go about their day-to-day -day lives. Um, and part of that is making sure that we can connect people to uh, activities and guides to make sure that they recreate responsibly, wise, and know where they're going prior to going, because that is pretty important. Um, so I'm really excited to have Susie Wall here with us today. She is a writer of various kinds of, and sources, um, and when she reached out to me, I was like, heck yes, I want to know 100 things to do in Montana before I die, because we all need a wonderful bucket list. Um, so I don't want to take up much more of your time, but just for emergency purposes, the restrooms are out the door to the right, and then emergency exit is out the door to the right, and to the right again. In case of an emergency, please do not take the elevator. Um, and without further ado, I invite Ms. Susie Wall up here to give her presentation for today. Thank you all so much for coming out. So, a little bit about the book. It's broken up into five sections. There's food and drink, music and entertainment, sports and recreation, culture and history, and shopping and fashion. And I want to make sure um, that I emphasize it's a list and not a ranking in any way, so please don't think I'm counting these things down. I think number one is just as amazing as number 100. Um, I've got pictures throughout, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Um, insider tips, like the best seasons to visit, um, recommendations to get tickets ahead of time if it's a one-time event, so you avoid the lines at the gates, and then I put together some fun itineraries um, in the back of the book for, both, for the four seasons, but also um, some themed itineraries like how to get on the water across Montana or a, a couple's road trip. So some fun, some fun road trips that I had a lot of fun putting together. Um, real quick, these, these pictures here, the first one is the Margarita Pie at the Iron Horse Cafe and Pie Shop in Three Forks place I discovered myself last year. Um, the middle one is the swinging bridge across the Kootenai River, uh, the Kootenai Falls. Um, there's a nice little hike that you need to take, not too long, to get to the bridge and then you can walk over it and get an incredible view, especially when the river's really running hard. Um, and that's between uh, Libby and Troy. And then the Garden of 1,000 Buddhas in um, Arli. So a little bit about me, um, I um, am originally from Oklahoma. My husband and I uh, moved to Montana and Missoula specifically in 2007. At the time we were living in Estes Park, Colorado, which is a beautiful place but it's very touristy and it just didn't feel like home. I had a long commute down to the valley because there wasn't much work up in Estes. Um, so one day, well one day, I, I um, Put about six months into one day. We, we made this big plan and we put all our camping gear in our little Toyota Echo and stuffed it with all the provisions we could fit and we hit the road and drove around the country for six months looking for what we hoped would be our next forever home and we definitely found it in Montana um, and Missoula specifically and we've just loved it here ever since. Um, I'm a freelance writer specializing in travel. Freelance just means that I don't work for one particular publication or outlet. Um, it also means that I have to go out and get work myself, um, which I'm constantly doing, but that's kind of the fun part, I think. Um, this is my first book, but I've written numerous articles, both um, online and print publications, for a variety of subjects. Um, a lot of those are for... Um, Montana-based magazines. We're very fortunate, I think, here in the state to have a lot of magazines that are published specifically in Montana. So I've written for uh, Montana Quarterly, Montana Outdoors, uh, Distinctly Montana, and I write regularly for Missoula Valley Lifestyle, which is a nice little community publication we have in Missoula. Um, and I say specializing in travel because, again, as a freelancer, I can say I specialize in whatever I want, so I'm going to say travel. Uh, but I do write regularly for Northwest Travel and Life, which is a really nice print publication. Um, one of the few out there that's 
specializes in pretty localized travel. The magazine is based in Washington, so I write um, a lot of Montan Montana articles for them, but also Idaho, Oregon, <coughs> Washington, and a few um, British Columbia in them. And I try and be active in the community as I possibly can, um, as I'm sure most of you guys are. You wish you could always do more, but I am the program coordinator <coughs> and the um, on the board for Missoula's Five Valleys Audubon Society, so um, I love to go birding. Still not all that good at it, the identification part, but I enjoy it. Um, and a few other um, ways of trying to get back. So this is really the only slide that has pictures that aren't in the book. Um, this is my husband Dave in the corner there with this big guy at a rest stop in Washington. Um, this is me along the Enchanted Highway in North Dakota. I like to say I'm the short one there in case anybody doesn't know. Uh, the bottom one corner is the Oregon coast, um, one of my favorite places to travel when not traveling around Montana. And then this is Dave and I at the Sperry Chalet in Glacier National Park. Not in the book, but um, a really neat place um, to visit. And then this last one in the corner here is in the book. This is Freeze Out Lake Wildlife Management Area um, up in Shoto. Whether you're a birder or not, I think it's just an incredible place to go during the spring migration. Uh, happens the end of March, beginning of April, when thousands and thousands of snow geese come through, lots of swans as well. And I think last this last spring, the high count for the day was 117,000 snow geese. So it's just an incredible experience to be there and watch those thousands of white birds fill the sky and the, and the ponds. So what inspired me to write this book? Uh, this is Bannock State Park. Um, one of our many state parks, uh, and one of seven that I was able to write about in the book. Um, this is our first territorial capital, if you're not familiar with Bannock. And when you're there, there's a hill that you can climb that, um, over, that's where the original cemetery is for the settlement. Um, and you have this beautiful view, but then you also get to um, wander among the headstones, which I think is kind of neat. Learn about the early inhabitants of Bannock. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with this quote from John Steinbeck in Travels with Charlie. I'm in love with Montana. For other states, I have admiration, respect, recognition, even some affection. But with Montana, it is love. And as cheesy as it is, this is just how I see the book. This is my love letter to Montana. But I also hope that I can help to promote and support our small businesses. Um, I think we're pretty fortunate here that we don't have a lot of large population centers, which means we don't attract a lot of chain uh, businesses. And it doesn't matter to me where you go in the state, from Tiny Terry to Billings, you're going to find people that are working very hard in those communities um, to run restaurants, independent bookstores, um, hotels. Um, art galleries that feature local artists, and I just think, personally, it's very important that we spend our tourist dollars there, whether you live here or not. Um, I also hope to bring attention to our important historical sites. Uh, Montana's got such an interesting history, but also somewhat painful history um, at times, and um, I just think it's personally really important that we learn about that history if we're going to live here and definitely bring it forward to our decisions and our actions today. And then on the fun side, I hope to encourage both locals and tourists to embrace our quirky side and really find those weird and wonderful tourist sites. So this picture on the bottom here is the sculpture in the wild in Lincoln. Uh, it's a beautiful walk through the woods, through the Ponderosa Pine Forest, and you come upon um, these dozens of very large sculpture installations that do a great job of blending into the environment. I've, um, you could go there every day of the year and it would look different um, depending on how the snow falls and the light hits. This is called Tree Circus and you can actually walk inside there. It, they've got a few tunnels and you can run your hands along the walls that are made up of thousands of alder and willow branches. And then this picture here is the Missouri River Ferries. Has anybody ridden? One of the berries. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm glad I get some, and then um, I hope I can help people discover these also. So this, um, there's three ferries, Carter, 
uh, Loma and Winifred. Um, this is the Carter River Ferry, or I should say Carter Ferry. They all go across the Missouri River. Um, this one's just north of here, and I could easily talk about these all night because I just think they're so they're so cool and so Montana. But they're free. Um, they run seven days a week, twelve hours a day, often um, as long as the weather holds. And um, some of the, uh, I think the Carter one at least is close to a hundred years old. It's just a, a really cool thing to do to ride across the Missouri River on a ferry. <clears throat> so a little bit about the writing process. Um, a lot of people are interested in how I got this gig. Uh, a friend of mine who's a travel writer also wrote 100 Things to Do in Tacoma Before You Die. She lives in Tacoma, Washington. So I was curious, again, freelancer, I'm always trying to find that next gig, and I looked into the publisher, which is Reedy Press, they're out of St. Louis, and I noticed um, that they put out these guidebooks, 100 Things to Do Before You Die, for regions, states, cities across the country, and they hadn't done anything in Montana when I looked, um, which I thought was such a shame, and they're always looking for authors, um, so I thought, perfect, I'd, I'd love to do, to write this book, so I pitched myself and my writing, and after a brief interview process, um, I was off. Um, I will say that in the meantime, while I was writing this, there's a mother and daughter that wrote 100 Things to Do in Billings Before You Die, so now there's two Montana publications. Um, and I'll also say that Reedy is always looking for authors. Um, if there's any writers or aspiring writers out there, they're a great company to work for. Um, and they put out, you know, dozens of guidebooks like food and... Um, ghost stories and the weird and wonderful and things like that. So um, if anybody is interested, I would recommend checking out Reading Press. As I mentioned, this is my first book, so there was a lot of challenges for sure in writing it, um, but I, last year especially, I just had the time of my life putting it together. Um, the joys much outweighed the challenges. But my biggest challenge by far was what to use and what not to use, how to narrow it down to 100 things, because I could have easily written double or triple that. Um, I keep talking about a second edition. I, I can't wait to put that out, because the list was constantly changing, and um, pretty much up until my deadline in September, I was crossing things out and adding things. Um, and it just kills me that I couldn't put a lot of the things that I wanted to in the book. Um, but in the end, my two goals were that, one, I really tried to cover the state, um, north, south, east, west, not focus on those large population centers, but just cover as much as I could. Um, and also, of course, I'm going to put some things in there, like the sip and dip, that, that everybody knows about if you've lived here for any length of time. But I also hope that even if you have lived here for quite a while, I help you discover one or two new things. And since I've been doing these presentations, I have had people come up to me and say, you know, I've lived here all my life and I've never heard about this. So that's truly the, large, the biggest compliment that I, that I can have. The other challenge was the photography. As the author, I was required to supply all the pictures in the book. Um, there's quite a few black and white pictures and a really nice color section in here. Um, I have taken pictures before to supplement my writing, but it's really not my strength. So it was really fun last year to stretch that creative muscle and um, see if I could take those pictures. But I am proud to say in the end, they are all my pictures except um, this one in the color section, which is a beautiful picture of Quinn's Hot Springs Resort in Paradise that was taken by Noah Kauser Photography. and. I would have liked to take that picture, but I just didn't think I could go into a hot springs and start snapping photos of people in their skivvies. So <laughs> luckily I got that from Noah Kauser. So these are some things, um, just examples that I didn't use for various reasons. The first one here is the uh, Glacier Park Lodge in East Glacier, one of the national park lodges at, um, in Glacier. And it took me about two seconds to line through that. Lots of people know about these. They're booked up years in advance. I didn't think I was really going to help anybody discover something new. The middle one is the Archie Bray Foundation in Helena. Um, the main uh, primary 
primary function of it is as a school for the ceramic arts. Um, you can go in as the public and walk around the grounds and see these really neat um, ceramic creations. And uh, they have a nice gallery there. But because its main function is as a professional school, I just didn't think it belonged in a guidebook. Um, and then the last one I really wish I could have added, this is Big Hole National Battlefield in the Big Hole area. Um, it's a beautiful and very moving place um, commemorating um, or recognizing one of the Nez Pierce battles. Um, in the end, I just didn't think I had room for more than one battlefield, so I wrote about Little Bighorn Battlefield in Hardin for various reasons, but I'd highly recommend um, visiting Big Hole if you're in that area. So some fun stories from the road. I, after living in Montana since 2007, um, Dave and I just love to travel. It's still my favorite thing to do, just to set on, off on a road trip for the weekend. Um, but a lot of these things um, I wanted to revisit for various reasons, get pictures, see if they had changed since my last time. And also I really hope that I could discover, for selfish reasons, <laughs> I wanted to discover a lot of things in Montana that I didn't know about. So last year was really a deep dive into Montana travel, um, and it was just spectacular. Um, you guys may recognize this. This is the River's Edge Trail in here in Great Falls. Um, I thought I haven't taken the whole trail. Has anybody here been on the entire thing? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> it's pretty long. I, I can't remember the number of miles, but it goes out there, so um, it's really cool. Uh, so, the Charles M. Bear Family Museum in Martinsdale. This is one of the things that I definitely discovered last year when a friend of mine heard that I was writing this book. Um, he said, hey, you really have to check this place out, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, so it's in Martinsdale. I set out one day from White Sulphur Springs in central Montana on this just glorious summer day. The grass was green, the sky was blue, I was pretty much Felt like I was the only one on the road. I probably wasn't, but it's just one of those perfect, perfect days. There were pronghorn crossing the road. I could hear meadowlarks singing. And about 30 miles outside of White Sulphur Springs, I came upon the very small town of Martinsdale. And right next to that is this um, family museum. Charles Bear was a um, sheep rancher in the early 1900s, and he made his fortune doing that. Uh, and he built this home for um, his wife and two daughters. And over the years, um, the family, especially the two daughters, when, as they became adults, um, became very gifted art collectors. And um, it's just stunning that this is out there in Martinsdale. So you first walk into a museum that has um, incredible original Charlie Russells, Joseph H. Sharp, there's Native American beadwork and weaving. And then a volunteer will take you next door to the home and lead you through. And each room is more stunning, I think, than the next. That the same art continues in the home, but there's also European and Asian art. Again, the adult daughters traveled the world filling up this home. There's sterling silver vases that come up to my shoulder. There's 17th century furniture. Um, it's just such a treasure. And um, the thing that really impressed me most was the local volunteers that staff it. They were just so passionate to, to share it with me, and I guarantee you that they will be so excited to see you if you go, because I got the impression not a lot of people come here. Um, and then um, descendants of the original herd, the sheep, still graze on the property. Another discovery, discovery of mine last year was Valdoin National Wildlife Refuge up in Malta. As I mentioned, I'm a big birder, but um, still not all that good at it. But the Five Valleys Audubon Society in Missoula takes a field trip up here every year, and I had never been able to go, so I knew I wanted to check it out for the book, and um, it definitely made the cut. Uh, it's in Malta, which is along the High Line, Highway 2 in North Central Montana. Um, as most, most national wildlife refuges are, it's huge. It's over 15,000 acres. But really the only way to tour it is along a 15-mile auto tour, which consists of a one-lane dirt road that just encircles the refuge. Um, I was there on a blazing hot August day. That was the only time I could make it up there. And I still saw just an incredible amount of bird life. 
So this is a white-faced ibis here. There was an American white pelican, um, a staggering array of shorebirds and waterfowl. The marble godwit is a shorebird, and the northern shoveler is one of my favorite, favorite ducks, and grasshoppers. So of course, the minute I got close to the water, my car was just inundated with grasshoppers. And <laughs> Sarah's cringing, and I, I just could not stand to get out of the car. So you can see this first picture of the American pelicans was taken through a rolled up car window. <laughs> there was no way I was going to get out of the car. Luckily, I pulled up a little bit and a little breeze came up and I could hop out just for a few seconds and get this white faced ibis. But I, I was finding grasshoppers in the nooks and crannies of my car for weeks afterwards. And so much more. I could easily talk about all the hundred things, but I won't subject you all to that. Um, just a few things, the Montana Dinosaur Center in Bynum along the Rocky Mountain Front um, it has a great little museum, but they also give half-day and full-day tours where they'll take you out to look for dinosaur bones on private lands along um, the Rocky Mountain Front. And it, it's incredible. They're just laying on the ground. This is Dave holding a hydrosaur, I think, vertebrae. Um, they'll tell you what's a rock, what's a bone. Of course, I was constantly getting those two mixed up, but um, it's just amazing that we have access to, to this. Pictograph Cave State Park in Billings, again, one of our many great state parks. Um, there are three, they call them caves, but it's not like a cavern like Lewis and Clark Caverns where you can walk in. It's really just big um, holes in the rock, but it's still pretty incredible. This first one here is the actual Pictograph Cave. So you just stand in front of this immense um, carving in the, in the rock and these ancient pictographs or drawings that are you know, thousands of years old reveal themselves on the, on the dark back wall. Again, really cool that we have access to it. Um, the picture here on the bottom left is uh, Tizer Botanic Gardens in Jefferson City. Um, as I was mentioning before, I'm one of those people that I don't have green thumb. I can I kill those plants they say you're never supposed to be able to kill. Um, so this is a great place. Not only is it beautiful and very nice to go to on a hot day, but it's just it's run by um, just a few people, a, a small staff, and independently owned. And um, the work that they put into this um, these gardens is incredible. It's about I think like 12 or 15 gardens that run together, but they each have their own theme. So there's a children's garden, a butterfly garden, uh, and it's just, just beautiful. And you can also spend the night there. There were two women sitting outside there in their bathrobes when I was there one day. So um, it, it's just a neat place. And then the Celtic Games and Gathering in Hamilton is that last picture. It's coming up on the third uh, weekend in August down in Hamilton on the lawn of the Daly Mansion. Um, pipe and drum bands come from across the country to compete. There's whiskey tastings and tea tastings, um, of course Irish dancing and music, and um, you get to see burly men in short kilts swinging hammers above their head and tossing the cameras. And it's just a lot of fun. And really inexpensive. I think it's like less than $20 to get in. So just some fun ways to use this book. Um, again, it's not necessarily something that you read cover to cover. Uh, you could do a surprise road trip. So just uh, close your eyes, flip open the book, and that's where you're going to go on your trip. You can use it like a souvenir passport or journal, like our brewery passports. We have actually quite a bit of trails or passports in the state. Um, you can ask somebody at each de destination to sign the page or write your own you know, memories of, that, of your trip on each page. Uh, use it as visitor bait. We don't have to tempt our loved ones um, that live outside the state to come visit us too hard because um, where we live is so beautiful, but it would be fun if you put together your own itinerary or used one of mine and sent it to somebody to tempt them to come visit you here and see all the fun things that you're going to do. Um, and for any business owners out there, um, it makes a great closing gift for new homeowners, um, a welcome gift for an employee that's moved here for work. Um, and if you ever put together a conference, um, if you're involved in a nonprofit um, or a library and you want to put together a swag bag it's with made in Montana stuff, you can put it in there. We have so many great locally made products. 
So just to run down to these last pictures, this is Fort Benton, um, not too far from here. Uh, really neat town, I think, and just a Montana history lesson in, in one town. Um, I'm actually going to head up there tomorrow before I go back down to Missoula. Uh, Braycliff Mill at the bottom here, uh, it's along I-90, um, just east of Big Timber. It's technically in the town of Braycliff, but this is pretty much the town of Braycliff, so <laughs> I always use Big Timber. But I like to call this an oasis on the interstate. It's a great place to just hop off when you're on I-90 for a few hours or even a day. Um, they have a cafe there, they grow a lot of their own food, which they in turn sell in the cafe or a market um, that they have. They have a cheese cave now, um, you can go horseback riding, they have water, um, not water, trout ponds that you can go fishing in, there's a, there's a shop for kids to make wooden toys, and they just recently added a fiber arts room where you can go learn how to use a loom and make your own shawl. Um, it's just it's just a really cool place to, to just kind of get out of the traffic of I-90 for a little while. And then the last one here is one of my probably favorite things. Not that I should play favorites, but favorite things to do in Montana is the Gates of the Mountains boat tour um, just north of Helena on Holter Lake. I think that's right. Along the Missouri River. Um, beautiful boat ride, but also a great way to learn about the history um, of that place and the geology, and they're, I think, about to sell, not celebrate, that's a bad word, um, recognize the, the Man Gulch fire, it's oh, 75 yeah. years now, but they do make a, on this tour, they do make a stop there and, and talk a lot about the history of that devastating fire. I feel like I flew through that. That's all I have. If there's any questions, and again, um, I would love to hear Think your favorite things to do in Montana because I have definitely discovered a whole a whole new book of things in doing these presentations. Uh, there's a Montana books independent bookstore passport. Yes, I just that discovered get, that. And the Casupia one. Oh. They have little, they have little stamps. You know, when you go into the store, mm -hmm. they'll stamp it for you. That's cool. We have so many great independent bookstores here. Oh yeah. Uh, and I was just in Casupia today. Mm -hmm. They've got one copy of my book. I'm excited that they sold the rest. <laughs> signed. A signed copy, signed I copy, saw. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's really cool. There's also a chocolate um, trail that I haven't done yet. Um, the thing, a couple things in my book are the um, Trail to the Stars, which is actually a dark sky trail, um, a Southeast Montana burger trail. There's a pie, pie trail. trail. Oops. Pie trail? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's important. Yeah. Pie trail. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Family, the family restaurant. On yeah. 26th Street. Cool. That is a part of the pie trail. Oh, nice. You're very false. So how many things did you, was it 200 and you narrowed it down to 100 or 150? You know, or? I wish I had kept, I was just thinking that the other day, I wish I had kind of kept the lists as they were being edited. Um, I don't know what I really started with. I tried to just sit down when I first began and list a hundred things, and um, it just was kind of organic from there. I added and took away, and um, so I probably, I don't know, I probably had at least two or three hundred, you know, and some of them I would just, like the Glacier Lodge, just line through really quick, but others I really, I even went to some things and decided I just couldn't it wasn't feasible to use them for whatever reason, so, yeah. Yeah. Have you been to Whitefish? Yes. To Lula's Cafe? Oh, I love Lula's. It's not in the book, but yes, Lula's Biscuits and Gravy. That's the best huckleberry pie anywhere. Ooh. Ooh, and that's saying something in Montana. So. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot, of, a lot of things in Whitefish. That's a great place. I think, so as we were talking about earlier, I've been here for about four and a half years now. And I think one of the coolest things that I've ever done is I did the three day uh, White Cliffs trip. Um, oh, on the, on the Missouri. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's a secluded section of the river that's basically, they say exactly, more or less exactly how it was when Lewis and Clark oh, wow. came through um, and how you know the natives saw it. 
as well. And it's just, it's a beautiful section of river that's absolutely incredible. And um, I mean, it is, it's wild out wow. there. So that's a really cool spot. And it's hard to do if you don't have all the gear. So there are yeah. like a did few. Did you go with a guide or did you go by yourself? Yeah, we went with Missouri River Outfitters oh, here okay. in Great Falls. Um, or Montana River Outfitters. Missouri River Outfitters is in Fort Benton. Very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Montana River Outfitters here in Great Falls. Um, and they they did a great job. Um, if you go with an outfitter, they cook all the food for you and everything. That's so you'll cool. have like steak or chicken. And yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. One of the things I did write about was... Um, Rafting the Alberton Gorge, I'm not much of an adventurer, but that was probably the most intense thing I did, um, a little whitewater rafting. Um, but that company, they're based in Missoula, Lewis and Clark Adventures, and they, they do a multi-day Missouri River trip, and they I think they bring a naturalist or a historian along. And yeah, that's yeah, they usually do one with Clay list. Jenkinson, so if you can get on the one with Clay for oh, the cool. three-day trip, that, I would suggest that. Nice. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another one is yeah. um, Crystal Lake in your book. Have you been to Crystal Lake? No, where is it? Um, on the way to Lewistown. It's, oh. uh, it's a nice, pristine, really pretty small lake, but they have really good hikes there, and they have this wildflower trail that you can just walk around the lake, oh, and they really? identify the wildflowers. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, cool. See? <laughs> yeah, I could easily write <laughs> 10 more books. Yeah, exactly. That's very cool. Well, I do have the books for sale, but they're also available, it sounds like, across Great Falls and Cassiopeia and, and Leslie's Hallmark, and um, the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center is in the book, and they carry a few as well, and I'm sure there's probably some others, but um, that's all I have, but I'm happy to stay and answer some questions. Um, this last picture, I shouldn't have said the other ones were the last, this <laughs> last picture is the Ross Creek Cedars. Uh, natural area outside of Libby. Uh, also, great time right now to go visit. Um, and that's my email and my Instagram page if anybody has any questions about the book. Thank you.